Hello and welcome to my channel. Now tonight is going to be a little bit different tonight today whenever you get to view this. I am getting ready to do the DPathon on this weekend and part of that is that I'm helping to raise funds for the charity for Australia Zoo. So what I'm going to do is read some information from the Australia Zoo's website, which is kind of going to then roll into the DPathon. And given that the dot to dot today is a pet shop, please don't buy your pets from a pet shop if you can avoid it. Anyway, that's not really the point, but animals. So Steve Irwin, as everybody knows, is famous for his khaki and his Australia Zoo and his over exuberant Australian attitude and passion for all things wildlife so was and his family continues to be um so the blurbs from the website and um information there is um steve was born in 1962 he was larger than life it was such a shame when he died i think it shocked all of australia when he did um die um, his out there personality, persona and can-do attitude would have him stirring the crowd wherever he went. His wild antics started at a young age and having parents that cared for wildlife, it's no wonder Steve's drive for life was fueled from wildlife. As the host of Crocodile Hunter, he wowed his audiences by the millions. He crouched in scorching heat and sloshed through thick mud for one purpose because he was committed to the survival of all wildlife and their environment. A cut cheek, grazed knee or sliced hand wouldn't slow him down or prevent him from saving as many as animals as possible, especially the crocs, because as Steve said, crocs rule. He lived in a home housed with dangerous snakes, lizards, injured animals, orphaned kangaroos, and that was quite normal for his life in the Irwin family. His mum cared for injured and orphaned animals, and he used to say that his mum was the Mother Teresa of wildlife rehabilitation. There wasn't a room in their house that didn't have a rescued animal of some description. And it was inevitable, as Steve grew up, that his passion would be for wildlife and the environment because it always came so naturally to him. In 1970, when he was aged eight, the family decided to relocate to Birwa on the beautiful Sunshine Coast in Queensland. They began to have a quaint little reptile park and that's how it remained until 1992 when Steve and Terry Irwin had the idea to make their passion for conservation to the rest of the world and as the saying goes the rest is history. Australian Zoo was in the making and the ultimate wildlife warriors were about to change how the world understood wildlife conservation. Steve's legacy is that his life was a cocktail of love, passion, enthusiasm and respect for wildlife. His excitement over the most deadly snake or tiniest lizard brought him to the forefront of animal conservation. He set the precedent for making sure his fellow humans cared for and respected wildlife and the environment as much as he did. He changed the world with, with his extreme conservation efforts and innovative ideas. He was a true blue Aussie bloke whose energy and passion shone through all that he did. Steve's legacy will live on forever through fellow wildlife warriors wife Terry and children Bindi and Robert. His conservation work and larger than life personality was, will endure. Steve's family are Terry and the kids. They, they met the world to Steve and it all began in 1991 when Terry visited the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park. Their whirlwind relationship was action-packed adventure and on the 28th of July 1998, Steve and Terry welcomed their little girl Bindi Sue into the world. It was evident from the way he held and mentored Bindi just how much he loved being a dad. He saturated with her with love and affection she was a daddy's girl who worshipped the ground he walked on. He did everything to get, they did everything together from cooking to surfing. On the 1st of December 2003, Robert Clarence Irwin was born and prouder parents have never existed. Often seen with his dad doing morning rounds at the zoo on the trusty motorbike, the pair were usually up to something. With a mischievous sense of humour and tons of energy, Robert is the mirror image of his dad. Um, now, Australia Zoo, uh, things started to change. There's going to be a little bit of repetition on the site here. There's an awful lot of information to get through. 
Um, so please, I'll put the link into this um, Frivolous Friday so that you can have a read yourself. And if you're interested, you could adopt an animal. Things changed as they took the reins in 1992. Gate attendance began to grow as the story of the enthusiastic Aussie who loved crocodiles spread. Visitor travel... Visitors travelled from near and far to catch a glimpse of the man in action and from that day onwards a small family owned wildlife park began its transformation into a world renowned conservation icon. Stephen Terry aimed to ensure the conservation of wildlife across the globe. Their goal was to strive for excellence and innovation, Steve leading the way for conservation through exciting education and a stance still paramount throughout the zoo today. Each day the car park overflows as mum, dads, kids and friends wander through the park in amazement. The zoo continues Steve's legacy, wowing visitors as they pour through one of the six booths that have now replaced the single gate. Today, Australia Zoo is positioned on more than 100 acres. It boasts lush gardens, native bush and spectacular enclosures, all planned, planned by Steve himself and his legacy lives on. Now, the wildlife warriors... This is where you, as a supporter of conservation, can get involved. Australia Zoo Wildlife Warriors Worldwide was established in 2002 by Stephen Terry Irwin as their way to include and involve other caring people in the protection of injured, threatened or endangered wildlife from an individual animal to an entire species. It's their mission to be the most effective wildlife conservation organisation in the world through the delivery of outstanding outcome-based programs and projects inclusive of humanity. It's with this mission that Australia Zoo Wildlife Warriors carries its legacy of Steve Irwin by conducting wildlife conservation projects within Australia and around the world, including the Australian Wildlife Hospital, Tiger 511 in Sumatra, Ele Elephant Conservation in Sumatra and Cambodia, Orangutan Conservation in Sumatra, Tasmania Devil Conservation, Rhinoceros Conservation in Kenya and Cheetah con Conservation in South Africa, as well as a grey nurse shark research and conservation locally. Our biggest research project in Australia is the longest and most comprehensive study of in existence of the saltwater crocodile. Wildlife Warriors major sponsorship uh, Australia Zoo gives vital support to Australia Zoo Wildlife Warriors by covering all administration costs and by providing their essential support where necessary. That means that 100% of donations to the charity can be applied directly where it's needed most, making an immediate impact into the world of wildlife conservation. Now, I know the bushfires were quite prominent back at the beginning of the year and people were pumping funding into all sorts of different agencies. A lot of those agencies, unfortunately, have had the money locked up by certain regulations and certain red tape issues that they can't seem to overcome. Funding has not been going to people. I have seen, however, that Australia Zoo's funding, if you have funded any of these wildlife conservation things, the money has got where it's been needed, which is why I'm promoting this as opposed to bushfire relief or anything else, because I don't think the money is getting where it needs to go. Um, in those cases and with these you can support financially and you can um, do whatever it is that you need to do. There are gala events, one's in Brisbane and one is actually in Los Angeles. If you're in the States and you're interested in a gala dinner, you can register your interest for the May 1st 2021 event. Uh, the 2020 gala dinner was cancelled for the safety and well-being due to the COVID um, issues, but they have set a date for 2021. I don't know what's involved. I don't know how much it is. You can register your interest. It is black tie with a touch of khaki, however that works. Um, but yes, the, the Irwins are there and there's lots of information uh, through the site that you can see. It's in the SLS Hotel in Beverly Hills. Um, you've got the chef, Jose Andre, as part of that and it is sponsored by many many companies and businesses all right let's see now there are education groups in um, Australia Zoo they actually have different education levels that, uh, that they promote all of this to so they they gear it towards kindy kids 
um, primary school kids and they have all of these educational programs there. The mission of Australia Zoo is to make a difference through the world. There's conservation projects, there's crocodile research, there's wildlife warriors and there's education programs. Um, now, the wildlife warriors, if you do that, there's donations and bequests. So imagine growing up in a world with no cheetahs. Uh, hang on, it went to a different page and it gave me different information. Now, you can donate from Australia, you can donate from the United States, and you can donate from elsewhere. So there's three different methods that you can actually do a donation. Become a Wildlife Warrior is making a tax-deductible once-off or monthly donation to help protect wildlife worldwide. Steve Irwin had a vision for conservation where people and wildlife could live harmoniously alongside one another. Now with animal population growth and urbanization causing many species to live side by side with people, Steve's work is more important than ever. By making a one-off donation or joining our monthly giving program, you become a part of global force that is working to build a future for all wildlife species, natural habitats, and ultimately us humans. Simply select your location from the options above and make a gift of conservation today. Australia Zoo is our major sponsor and covers all administration costs, ensuring that 100% of your donations go directly to where it is needed, saving wildlife. Tax donations, uh, sorry, tax deductions on donations within Australia, you can certainly claim that um, as part of your tax deductions and all the information is there as well. All right, now let me go back back there was so um, conservation projects there is so much information on this site there I'll, I'll just give you some glimpses there's news from the field with ever-changing technology in the world and it's showing a picture with a rhino Australia Zoo Wildlife Hospital Australia wildlife is uniquely its own and much loved around the world but it's disappearing there are some sea turtles in another section there's crocodile research women for wildlife there is the whale shark reaching up to 65 feet in length and weighing over two, 22 US tons there's the whale shark there's a grey nurse shark there is a Sumatran tiger there is koala conservation there are Cambodian elephants there's the cheetah the Black Rhino, the Steve Irwin Wildlife Rescue, sorry, Wildlife Reserve and Conservation Partners. The Steve Irwin Wildlife Reserve, it's got this wacky black cockatoo, is a haven for, nat for the natural world. It's got 330,000 acres or 130,000 hectares of untouched paradise, which is bursting with wildlife across 35 diverse ecosystems. Rare and endangered species thrive at the reserve and thanks to 451,234 people who signed the petition and campaign to save it, Steve's place will remain this way. This beautiful part of the world is one of Steve's favourite places because of its abundance of crocodiles. After his passing, it was gifted to his family and set aside as a place for scientific research and discovery. Just days after, days after it was announced, a mining company's plans threatened to destroy it all. No time was wasted. Terry Irwin launched a campaign to protect it forever. And now a strategic environmental area, Steve's Place has more protection than the Great Barrier Reef. One of the ecosystems here is completely new type of environment, previously unknown to mankind, the perched bauxite springs. What researchers have discovered so far is astonishing. The acidic pH levels of the water should mean that it can't sustain life, but many species have thrived. Species of reptiles, fish and amphibians appear to have adapted to the unique environment. The springs also act like a sponge, filtering water down a layer of aquifer and soaking up water in the monsoon or wet season to recharge the river in the dry season. They're a crucial part of the river system that supports so many lives. With the Steve Irwin Wildlife Reserve, we're now protecting over 450,000 acres, over 180,000 hectares of precious habitat throughout Queensland, from arid regions from the Brigalow Belt to the prime eucalypt bushland of the Great Dividing Range. 
these conservation properties are giving rare species such as the palm cockatoo, the wombat python and koala a real chance at flourishing. Now, this may give bird call. No, it's going to be a longer video. A uh, gift from you today will help conservationists and researchers discover more about the unique spe species within these wild places and how to truly protect how to truly protect them. Now, um, from what I could see, you could give. Um, I'm just going into the donation page just to give you a rough idea of the starting price. OK, so choose your donation amount. It has set amounts and it has other. You can choose from 25, 50, 75, 100, 200, 500 or other. So if you only have a couple of dollars to give, they would be more than grateful to receive it. So don't feel you're under any pressure to give a minimum amount or anything else. Um, let's look at the koala conservation. I know Arlo created quite a bit of a stir with the bushfires and they are now caring for Arlo. Famous for their adorable teddy bear appearance and tendency to snooze all day, the koala is internationally recognised and loved. But their numbers are under threat across Australia and they have been labelled functionally extinct. Urbanisation of once wild bushland threatens to uh, the wild koala populations. Koalas rely on eucalyptus trees for food, shelter and safety against predators. Since European settlement, Australia has lost a staggering 80% of koala habitat to deforestation. As their tree, trees disappear, so do koalas. Our increasingly man-made world introduces new threats to koalas. As housing estates and busy roads encroach into koala habitat, they're left vulnerable to road accidents, dog attacks, and an imminent spread of life-threatening diseases such as chlamydia. Today, koala numbers are at an all-time low. Uh, if you had this kind of money, I don't expect many would, if you have $5,000 to give, it would cover the cost of orthopedic surgery to repair a koala's broken limb after a road accident. So $5,000 to correct a bone broken limb from a road accident to rehabilitate the koala for the months and months that it takes to do that rehabilitation and then re-release it back into the wild. $5,000. So every little bit will help to rehabilitate just one animal. The Australia Zoo's Wildlife Hospital is providing koalas with a lifeline. Each year we provide treatment for up to six, sorry, 800 sick and injured koalas, making it Australia's busiest koala hospital. The specialist wildlife veterinarians and nurses at the forefront of koala conservation, working around the clock to mend broken bones, treat diseases, care for orphans, and give wild koalas a second chance. And it says here, give $10 and help feed an orphaned koala Joey for one day. Feeding pack includes bottle, teat and syringe and that's given to a wildlife carer who are specially trained. So $10 will feed a koala joey for a day. Um, deadly disease. A major threat to koalas is a debilitating bacterial infection called chlamydia, which humans can get as well. It's a sexually transmitted disease, frequently leads to blindness, severe bladder inflammation, infertility and death. More than 50% of koalas admitted to Australia Zoo Wildlife Park are infected with the disease and in desperate need of treatment. If you have $100 to give, it provides fluids and pain relief to a critical koala patient in the intensive care unit for 24 hours. With our support, researchers and wildlife veterinarians are working to get rid of koalas, uh, of the, to rid the koalas of disease. Through developing advanced diagnostics, treatment strategies and long-term solutions, experts are determined to help keep the koala populations to thrive more. To give youngsters a fighting chance, in 2018, hand-raised orphans at the Australia Zoo Wildlife Park were given a chlamydia vaccine before release to give them the best chance of a long and healthy life and save koalas forever. And again, you have that choice of the giving once or giving monthly. Um, let's take it a bit more further afield and see what they're doing with the cheetah. Now, while the world sees cheetahs as Africa's icon, local farmers mistakenly place the blame on livestock deaths on the cats. Today, cheetahs are running out of time, with as few as 6,600 left in the wild. It's not always easy getting on with your neighbours, particularly when they are wild animals. 
As the human population in Africa expands, larger mammals like cheetahs simply don't have enough space to roam and find food. When this happens, farmers' livestock can seem like an easy meal. Most of us want to save wildlife, but sometimes it's difficult for local people to put the lives of wild animals before their own family and livelihood. Desperate to keep their livestock safe, safe and provide for their children, some farmers resort to drastic and deadly measures. Indiscriminate traps, guns and poisons become a way to manage predators. To help put a stop to this, we support the Cheetahs Outreach Guarding Dog Program. Not now. In South Africa, where local people farm livestock, the natural predators like cheetah roam and hunt. Guardian dogs are live savers. Chosen for their strength and loyalty, Anatolian shepherd dogs are placed with herds of cows, goats and sheep to deter predators and keep the peace. Give $20 and provide food for the guardian dog for one week to ensure the animal receives a healthy diet and proper nutrition. Now, so you can see that twenty dollars. I mean, that keeps the dog for a whole week um, to support this um, initiative down in Africa. By just living with the herd, the dogs are able to alert them to nearby threats and ensure the younger members have time to gather beneath the safety of the group. If a cheetah or other predator gets too close, the dog will bark loudly and growl fiercely to scare them away. As the livestock are no longer an easy meal, the big cats retreat and hunt for food elsewhere. Donate $50 and cover Cheetah's Outreach Field Officer's fuel costs for one day to allow them to travel to farms and monitor those guardian dogs. As the word spreads about the Guardian Dogs program, more and more farmers join the movement. Thanks to our support, Cheetah Outreach is able to provide caring farmers with a guardian dog, dog food and medical treatment for the first year. In return, the farmers work with the team to report cheetah sightings and facilitate help for injured big cats. It's a win-win for cheetah conservation and humanity. Make a gift of $100 and provide a veterinary team with medical supplies for one guardian dog checkup to provide the animal with the best care. With the guardian dogs on farmlands, hundreds and thousands of acres are now safe for endangered cheetah or other predators. Ruthless and lethal predator management methods are becoming a thing of the past and we're working together to save cheetahs. Slowly but surely, people are learning about the importance of living harmoniously alongside wildlife, just as Steve envisaged. Uh, now, you may be very familiar with the black rhino um, and how endangered that they are. Let's hear something on these. With a heavy structure, stature, armor-like skin and pointed horns, Rhinos appear invincible, but looks can be deceiving. In truth, these big softies spend much of their time eating on the savannah and wallowing in the mud, oblivious to their one and only threat, humans. Fueled by the misbelief that the horns are powerful and valuable, rhinos continue to disappear from many parts of the world. Slaughtered by poachers and traded by wildlife criminals, their future has taken a grim turn. Human greed has left populations in dire need of our protection. Over three short decades, 30 years, we've lost all but a few black rhinos. In 1993, less than 400 rhinos remained in Kenya. The overwhelming mission to save rhinos began. The old Pajita Conservancy, excuse me, on 90,000 acre sanctuary was chosen to house 20 black rhinos, a population that has grown to 120 with our ongoing support. Now as East Africa's largest population of black rhinos, we're playing a huge role in rhinoceros conservation. For the subspecies like the northern white rhino, it may be too late. In early 2018, the world said goodbye to Sudan, the last male northern white rhino on Earth. Now only two remain, his daughter Najin and her daughter Fatu. Both live under constant protection on the old Pajeta Conservancy. The future of their family and subspecies now lies with modern day uh, science. While rhinos only exist in heavily guarded areas, today the role of our rhino guardians is more important than ever before. Teams of fearless rangers work around the clock to deter unwanted intruders and protect the cr critically endangered rhinos. Our support providers provides the team with patrol equipment and helps improve the rangers' well-being and living conditions. By building new accommodation blocks, it gives them a safe place to rest and under their watch we can watch the rhino we can save the rhino. Make a gift of $100 and provide bedding for a ranger's housing block. 
A specially trained canine unit work alongside the rangers from tracking the scent of a poacher to detecting ammunition and attacking and detaining potential suspects. These conservation dogs are helping to eliminate wildlife crime. Give $20 and help feed a tracker dog in the canine unit for one week. When local communities thrive and prosper, the people of, can, can help wildlife do the same. By empowering communities with programs for school children, medical dispensaries for people in need and water catchment systems for drought ridden farmers, more people are choosing to partake in rhino conservation rather than poaching activities. We're working to build relationships and close the information gap between the rangers and the local community. Thanks to your support, uh, SMS reporting system now allows, allows locals to report illegal activity anonymously and help anti-poaching teams detect threats early and respond quickly to incidents. Donate $50 and cover the cost of fuel for the anti-poaching patrol teams for any one day. All right, one last area that we'll look at. We'll look at wildlife for women, seeing as we're a lot of female crafters. No um, insults to any of our amazing guys out there. Poaching not only devastates countless species, but leads to the social and moral decay of surrounding communities. The war on poaching breeds violence and corruption and results in overwhelming loss of life, both wildlife, both wildlife and people. The Black Mambas, South Africa's first female anti-poaching unit, is fighting to win this war, not with guns and bullets, but with social upliftment and education. Inside the Balule National Reserve, sorry, Nature Reserve, Balule Na Nature Reserve, part of the Greater Kruger National Park in South Africa, a team of army trained women card the front line. Having grown up alongside Africa's iconic animals, rhinos, elephants, lions and much more, they've seen firsthand the destruction caused by poaching. Utterly heartbroken and highly concerned for their children's future, these women, first mothers, then rangers and now leaders in the community, strive for peace. Give $40 and provide a black mamba ranger with a spotlight to aid an anti-poaching night patrol. With our support, the black mambas work to create a powerful presence in the reserve and neighbouring villages. By closely monitoring over 1,200, sorry, 100,028, no, hang on, I'm, I always have struggle with reading these big numbers, 128,400 acres, there we go, 128,400 acres of habitat and building relationships in the surrounding communities, they're able to make the area undesirable and unprofitable for poaching as possible. Their peaceful tactics often have helped reduce the incidence of snaring and poaching by up to 80%. What's more, in an effort to completely eliminate violence in these areas, they do this all unarmed. Give $100 and help cover the vehicle costs for the anti-poaching patrol teams, of, of which they require 5 gallons or 20 litres per day. The Black Mambas act as the first line of defence against wildlife criminals. Their peaceful community efforts allow them to detect suspicious activity early. While they're on foot patrols, searching for snares, tracking human footprints or educating people within the communities, they're in a position to receive information directly and raise the alarm. They then call for backup or, especially for, um, or special forces which are trained to make arrests. Make a gift of $200 and provide a black mamba ranger with the appropriate footwear to complete foot patrols through dense habitat. The black mambas are more than just an anti-poaching unit. While their main activity is security and protection of the reserve and its wildlife, they bring about real long-term change through education. By establishing community programs, they're educating the future leaders of society, the children, on the importance of conservation and the ongoing effects of poaching. It's these programs that help bring the community cl closer together to celebrate the power and knowledge and instill a proud, emphatic and patriotic attitude towards wildlife and the environment. All right, there is so much more on this website that I will link through to you. The links will be in the description. I hope you've enjoyed hearing some of what Australia Zoo is all about. Um, as I've said, you can give as little as you need um, or as much as you want. Um, in this, everything that you give will be given to very, very worthy causes. And it's up to you whether you leave it with Australia or you put the money for international resourcing. Um, 
I hope you've learned something from this and um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed my, this is a very, very bad dot to dot this week. I've made lots and lots of mistakes on it. I do apologize. Um, but yes, it was a pet shop and you get to see the parrot and the turtle, I think it is, and the lizard just from memory. I've gone and put the book away so I can't actually see the final image. All right. Thank you for watching and joining me. Please join in for the dp -thon this weekend and um, give to and one of the many charities that we're all going to be promoting. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.